Hi and welcome to the water quality analysis tapes for the Friends of the Chicago River and for Ecological Biology. These tapes are in intended to make you become an expert at water quality analysis in the various tests that we're going to do in our Ecological Biology class. I'm Mr. Piskel and I'm one of the biology teachers that teaches Ecological Biology. Might be your teacher or I might be one of the teachers that helps out at GBN in your class when we go to the river. This is the West Fork of the North Branch of the Chicago River and it's a beautiful day. I'm out here telling you how to use the tapes, how to effectively learn how to do the tests. You'll notice that after you're done with the introduction tape, you'll be able to find right on this GBN Science Department YouTube video selection your particular water quality test to do your particular water quality and learn how to do it. Um, the, te the tapes are designed so that you can stop them where you need to, take notes as you go in your journal, and become a real expert. It'd be really impossible to try and teach all the tests right in the class with one teacher and 26 students doing a variety of 10 different water quality tests. This way you can find it on the YouTube tape, become an expert, take your notes, and go for it. We're going to try and do ecological science, not just learn about it. The reason why we collect data here at the river is not only to learn how to become a scientist, but also to share our data with the Friends of the Chicago River and with the Illinois Rivers Project at Southern Illinois University. These particular groups want data from this stretch of the river to know its overall health. So you're doing real science and you need to be able to do the tests as well as possible. With these tapes and then practice in the room and instruction in the class as well as your readings outside of it, you're going to become that expert. So in this introduction I just want to tell you a few things that all groups need to know. The first thing is that safety comes first. When we go out here, it's not always a beautiful day. In order for you to be comfortable in thinking, you have to dress according to the weather. These tests usually take place later on in October. So the weather could be anything from a beautiful 70 degree day to kind of a cloudy, overcast, 40 degree misty day. So it's important that you dress appropriately, have sweaters or jackets. If it's nice outside, you can always take them off. But if you don't have them to begin with, you're going to be uncomfortable, cold, you're going to be thinking about that rather than trying to collect good data. So dress appropriately, especially with closed-toed shoes. The footing down here, there's a lot of rocks. It's very unstable at times, so you want to have good footwear on as well as you want to be dressed appropriately. The other thing we do is we wear goggles, splash goggles, when we're working with the water or when we're collecting our water samples. And we also wear latex gloves to protect our hands from contact with the river water. Over the past 13, 14 years that we've collected data, we've noticed that the bacteria count can be very high in this river. Therefore, we want you to make sure that you're protected against that. So we give you gloves, we give you the goggles to wear, well, you actually bought the goggles to wear, and we expect you to wear them while we're at the river. If you're in the publicity group and you're shooting videos and things like that, you don't need to wear the goggles and gloves as long as you're not standing out on, in the water. If you go out to take shots, you too need to be dressed appropriately. Everybody else while you're doing your test, you need to be dressed appropriately. By the way, publicity, since you're one of the set of eyes that is out here while we're collecting data, if you see someone not wearing their safety equipment, don't film them and instruct them to put it on. That would be a big help. Everybody should be kind of helping everybody out within their own teams and groups. So if you dress properly, study these tapes, come out here and do the best possible job you can at collecting real data, we can actually be an asset to our own community in monitoring the water quality of the West Fork of the Chicago River. So, sit back with your journal, arm yourself with a pen or a pencil, be ready to stop the video and take a few notes so that you know how to do the procedure for your particular water quality test using the YouTube channels that we've set up. Good luck and thank you for your participation. Right now I'm going to show you how we're going to collect water and most of the groups are going to have to collect water when they first come down to the river. Notice I'm armed with my gloves and my goggles and I'm ready to go and collect my water. We have these poles that allow us to reach out into the river without having to get into the water to collect our water and we have special bottles for collecting the water. 
The group that's going to go first is turbidity and total solids. They're going to collect water because remember, turbidity is the clarity of the water, and so they're going to be the first group to collect water, and I'll let you think about the reason why they go first. After that, we're going to have um, dissolved oxygen and biochemical oxygen demand get their water, and then we're going to have nitrates, phosphates, and then fecal coliform is going to get their water last because when they're out here at the river, they're going to be assisting benthic macroinvertebrates, and their test takes place back at school. So first you get your safety equipment on, and then you take this pole, which has these little wing nuts on it. You put your water collection bottle right into the clamp, and you tighten it down and make sure it's really tight on that. You take the top of the bottle off, and then you're going to reach out into the river with the bottle upside down. You're going to let it go into the water, completely under the water, turn it right side up under the water. It needs to be below the surface of the water when you collect it, perhaps four to five inches deep. You're going to let it sit there for a moment and rock it back and forth to get all of the air bubbles out. You don't want to collect any air bubbles in your sample, especially if you're dissolved oxygen, biochemical oxygen demand. Then you're going to let it rock for a while, then you're going to bring it up and then pull it back towards you this way, and then it's ready to cap. When you cap it, you want to put the cap down and prevent any air bubbles from getting in it. Right straight down, there'll be a little bit of water that spills out that's absolutely fine, and there's your water sample. If you need to take multiple water samples, you'll unhook this, you'll give it to you, one of your partners, and then you'll collect the next water sample, and so on. That's all there is to it to get the water and then doing the test is up to you. That'll be on the remaining tapes. So now it's time to go and look at your specific water quality testing tape, watch, take notes, and make sure you know how to do the procedure for your test. Good luck.